Hey everyone, today I just wanted to make a quick and easy tutorial <clears throat> on airbrushing with uh, testers enamel paints. Uh, so thinning enamel paints for airbrushing is a lot um, like airbrushing with acrylic. Uh, for instance, a lot of people thin, you know, this is a Tamiya or Tamiya, however you pronounce it, acrylic. A lot of people will thin it with this, which is uh, perfectly fine. Um, the only difference with enamel is obviously you want to use some sort of uh, enamel thinner. I'm just going to use this Tester's Enamel Thinner and Brush Cleaner, which is perfectly fine. Or you could probably, if you wanted to experiment, you could use something like this, which is just uh, your hobby grade uh, paint thinner. Or uh, let me reach over here real quick. You could use something like... Uh, this. Now, the only thing is when you use uh, products like this or the Mona Lisa, um, obviously you will have to do a little bit of experimentation. Um, sometimes a lot of the reason why people will match products like this uh, Tamiya with Tamiya or testers with testers is because, um, you know, the manufacturers, uh, they just, they know what the result is going to be like. They've tested it and that's why they recommend it. Um, there's far too many products on the market for them to know how their paints will interact with every single product out there. So, you know, I will say um, sometimes these uh, proprietary uh, products are really just the same thing as, you know, this. Um, they just repackage it and oftentimes charge more money. So uh, I don't know enough about the paints and all the products to really be able to tell you the difference uh, in that regard. All I know is that people often recommend, you know, stick with the manufacturer. And I believe with Tamiya, um, they have whatever chemicals they use as a as a as um, an agent in it, this will not uh, react to that. I guess so that's why a lot of people use that so like I said if you want to experiment you know you just you know you can use just about anything to thin uh, but for today's purposes I'll be using this now for a ratio um, it's much like uh, thinning with acrylic um, you just want to get the paint where it's not so goopy and it's gonna clog your airbrush um, or it's just gonna throw big chunks out and you don't want it so thin that uh, you're just not getting good coverage and uh, you're getting that like um, that spider web effect where it's hitting and it's and it's going out like that so you you want I'm not going to give you an exact number but uh, <clears throat> you want it just to be like a kind of uh, thin milky consistency to where you know if you were to put it um, and, and I'll show you guys more but if you were to put it in a palette like this and you took your brush and brushed up against the side, it would just kind of run back down. And um, I know that isn't too descriptive, but there is really not an exact science. Um, a lot of people just eyeball it and they go from there. Uh, and to make things easier, I recommend um, doing your mixing in your airbrush. It just makes it a lot easier. And you know, if you add a little bit too much thinner, we'll just add a little bit more paint. Or if you have too much paint, just add a little bit more thinner. It's, it's not an exact formula necessarily. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to paint the faces on these um, figures. Uh, I'm not afraid to show you guys the ugly. Uh, this is one I hand painted. Um, it, you know, it came out okay. Uh, I did lose a little bit of detail. That being said, in this monogram kit, there's not that much detail to begin with, but I definitely lost um, a little. But for hand painted, you know, not too bad. I used uh, testers enamel for that. So let me get this paint mixed up and uh, let's uh, experiment. All right, I've gone ahead and mixed this up. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but if you look, this might actually be a little bit too thin, but see how it's just kind of, uh, you know, it's not like water. Um, it sticks to the sides a little bit, but it, it flows back down. Uh, that might be a little bit too thin, but like I said, it's not rocket science. It's flowing pretty freely in there. Uh, I mixed it up using the uh, the blowback. Well, this is weird. Uh, the position I'm in, I'm using the uh, blowback just by covering up the, uh, the nozzle with my finger. I have it real low, like 15 psi, so it doesn't bubble everywhere. And I'm just like that. 
And that's a pretty good way of mixing up everything without uh, splashing everywhere and having to transfer. So uh, I'm going to get set up and uh, let's try out this consistency. All right, so just peeled all the tape off. You can see I got a little bit of overspray on his helmet there, but I can clean that up very easily because this is enamel paint. I could probably just take a Q-tip to that, um, or just you know, when I paint his helmet, obviously um, just I can correct that. But that came out really well. I'm gonna try to get up as close as possible. This is a cheaper kit. You know, this is not a Tamiya or Dragon or any of those companies, so there's not that much detail. But you can imagine if there was detail in his face, um, I really didn't fill up any of the spaces. And it just went on so cleanly. Again, with a tiny little bit of um, overspray. But honestly, I'm showing it to you, up, you know, super close. Um, this is, you know, actually what it, what it looks like. So, uh, sorry, my uh, German Shepherd's making a lot of noise in the background. But there's that one. And then here's the uh, guy with the grenade. You can see how cleanly it went on. I got a little bit of overspray. But like I said, I'm, I'm a beginner with the uh, airbrush and the whole painting thing. Uh, and then, uh, where's my finger? Yep, on his uh, sleeve there, I got a little bit to clean up. But overall, um, not bad, you know? Enamel paints, it's uh, already dry. And uh, just with a little bit of tape, um, <laughs> this guy's expression is uh, is rather funny. It's just, this is the cheap monogram. This is actually my first ever kit, so I'm just having fun learning, practicing, trying out different um, techniques. But again, I'm, I, you know, I'm showing you guys in the mistakes, but you know, from, from a distance, I mean, um, you know, that's how, that's how it turned out for painting the skin tone on them. So, uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, painting with enamels, where's my uh, paints here, is just like painting with acrylics. You just thin and uh, the same principles apply as far as you know, the thinning ratio. I didn't show the ratio, but like I said, I did show uh, the inside of the uh, airbrush and it's just like a, a milky flowing consistency and always just test on a piece of paper or a plastic cup. Like you can see there, I tested on and I knew I wasn't getting any spidering or blobbing. So I knew it was fine. Now the last step um, for cleaning, I'm not gonna show this because there's tons of videos on YouTube. We don't need to duplicate, but all I'm gonna do is I really didn't even use that much uh, paint. And if anyone is curious, if you're painting World War II figures, this is flat light brown, or I'm sorry, flat light tan. You get this for like $2 at your hobby shop. Um, so all I'm gonna do to clean this is take some of this, or I might save that and just use some odorless turpenoid or even the Mona Lisa thinner. I'm just gonna basically do a process where I pour that in here, do the blowback, swish it around, pour it into a cup, and then just keep on doing that um, until it's clear and uh, use some Q-tips and get in there. But uh, with the acrylic, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving, um, but I don't know, you, you know, whether it's acrylic or, or enamel, if you let it completely dry inside your airbrush, you're gonna have a, uh, you know, a bad time. So in my opinion, uh, enamel paint, you know, is always easier to clean up because of the fact that if you use paint thinner, it just, it you know, it wipes it right off. So anyway, that's all I got. I uh, just want to make a quick video on how to airbrush uh, these little testers. I think they're one point, or no, I'm sorry, 0.25 fluid ounces, how to airbrush with these, what products I use, and uh, you know what the result looks like and like i said even though i'm not a pro i think it turned out uh pretty good so stay tuned i'll have more videos like this give me a thumbs up if you uh enjoy this or learn something and uh drop any questions you have in the comment section below and i'll try to get back to you take it easy guys